In the previous tutorial, I showed how to create this using a Photoshop action, which is very, very fast, um, but the investment is $39.99. And um, if you do a lot of commercial editing and or blogging, and this is something that you would use a lot, then it's well worth the investment because it'll save you a ton of time. Likewise, if you have the knowledge to make uh, actions yourself, you can certainly make your own. But for the, the other percentage of people who don't want to invest in an action um, and wouldn't use it enough to warrant it, you have everything that you need to duplicate something like it already built in your in your Photoshop, and, and now I'm going to give you the know-how. So um, in, in versions um, of, I believe, CS either 3 and 4 and up has this tool here. Um, which is called the quick selection tool, which can be um, selected by pushing W um, or selecting it up there. And basically what this does is when you click on it here, it will, and it, right now it's only at one pixel, so we need to move up a little bit. It will, it will try to smart select that area for you. And um, it does a pretty good job, a pretty good guess. If you hold down the Alt button, it will change the plus into a minus, and then you can subtract areas around here um, and, and pick your just your pupil area a little bit more um, defin like a little bit more defined right in there. Um, and the reason that you wanted to do it in just the pupil is that if you're going to run some sharpening, that's not something we want to get on the skin. Um, and it's okay generally if you want to include some lashes. Some people do. Uh, but for this part, I just like to include the pupil. So, um, okay, so from here, you've selected the pupil. If you don't have this tool, um, you can try the magic wand tool or the magnetic lasso. Um, and the magnetic lasso, lasso here is the L tool, and it is available, um, I believe, as early as, um, as, as elements. So... Um, but if you have some of the more advanced versions, you can just go ahead and click and it would, it'll do a pretty good job guessing for you. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead up to filter. We're going to go to sharpen and we're going to go to unsharp mask. Now unsharp mask is, um, is one of those terms that can really throw you off because it says unsharp, but it, in fact, it actually does, uh, does sharpen. So, um, I'm going to set my radius to about um, 1, anywhere between 0 0.8 to 1.2, depending on what you want. And you can judge, and maybe a threshold of 4. And you can watch the slider go. This is, this is if we don't do any sharpening at all. And you can pull this up to see um, some sharpening that looks right to you. Um, I avoid the silver, sort of like crunchy, overly uh, sharpened look right there. Uh, when you start seeing light in the eyelashes, I know it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to go to about maybe 90%, 88% it looks like, and hit OK. And already it sharpened it um, a little bit. And we can go ahead and take a snapshot so we can come back and compare. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, and I like to leave this area um, highlighted, certainly not necessary for you to do that, but that's what I like to do. We're going to go look for this tool that looks like the, a hand pinch, and that's the burn tool. Um, so you can go ahead, and you're going to want to make a, a very soft, choose a soft brush here, and you're going to want to go really, really small, about the size of the pupil, and you can go ahead, and if, you're, if the pupil of the eye needs to be darkened or blackened, you can go ahead and um, Mine is set for midtones right now. You probably go to shadows. Go somewhere around, it doesn't really matter, between 8 and 12, 13%, um, whatever is sort of most comfortable for you. And you can play with that a little bit. And you can just go ahead and paint those on. Likewise, if the head isn't down quite as much, you'll have a little bit more um, area here around the lashes. And you can certainly um, unselect or deselect the irises, and you can certainly burn this area um, around the eyelashes too, which uh, especially on little girls looks really nice and on women. Okay, so the next thing that we've done, so the first thing we've done of course is sharpen and then we went ahead and burn with the pupil. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to dodge this area right in here. Um, so 
The dodge tool is actually below the burn tool. Dodge means lighten. You can hit it by um, pressing O on your keyboard, or you can certainly do it by, by selecting the tool right over here. And again, we're going to reduce this um, size to, to pretty small. This is on highlights and 5%. I like to keep this really low because you can always add um, more to it. But go ahead and dodge uh, this area right in here. And it'll bring back some of that, um, some of the lightning color that, that sharpening brings out some of the lightness in there. And you can go ahead and take a picture, a snapshot, and it'll allow you to go back and sort of see what you've done so far. Very subtle, but nice. Okay. All right, so what we've done so far is um, sharpen, darken, which is called burn and dodge. And so you have a couple options here. Um, at this point, if you needed to uh, to bring the color a little bit closer to what you see in real life, you can go to Image, Adjustments, and you can add a photo filter. And a photo filter is a nice way to add just a little bit of subtle color. Um, the warming filter is turned on. You could certainly turn on a cooling filter. It'll make his eyes just a, a, a hint bluer. Um, his eyes are more like... Um, this kind of color with the orange in the middle so you could bring in, bring in a little bit of the cyan color pull it down if you wanted um, again we're trying to achieve a realistic look so um, this is not the look that we're going for um, very very subtle on anything that you bring in always try to keep it uh, as close to the original as you can and again you can go ahead and take a picture and compare where we are. So there, this was the beginning, and here's where we are now. Very subtle. Okay, now the next thing that I like to do is run um, an edge sharpening, and um, there's two different ways to do this. Uh, the way that I'm going to show you is through a high pass filter, and then uh, we're going to end up doing it only on the eyes, although you can certainly do it elsewhere. So take your background layer and duplicate it. You can duplicate it by dragging this to the, to the add a new layer or simply by pushing control or command J on your keyboard um, and you'll actually make a new pixel layer. So um, we won't want to keep this like this uh, too long, but, um, but just while we're working. So now we have layer one and we're going to go up to filter, other, and we're going to go to high pass. And what's going to happen is your screen is going to turn gray and you're going to see very faint eye outlines of the eyes. You know, right now this is 0 0.8 pixels. You know you've gone too far um, when you can see the person, when you can see any part of the face at all, um, or even when it gets to kind of glowy like this. You're going to want to see the outline, but you don't want it to have any kind of white or glow to it. So I tend to stick around 0 0.8, 0 0.9, uh, somewhere around there. Um, when it starts to glow, I know I've gone too far. So I'm actually going to pull this back on this one, maybe 0 0.7, and see what happens. Okay, so that's good. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then um, rather than leave this gray, which is the high pass filter here, we're going to change the blending mode where it, right here where it says normal and we're going to go to overlay. And what that does, if you toggle this on and off, I'll bring it up to 200% so you can see closer. This is without it, this is with it, is it does um, sharpening but it only does it on the lines. Uh, it doesn't do any uh, anything that was gray that you didn't see the lines wasn't sharpened. So it means that it didn't do any sharpening on the skin. It didn't change the skin at all. And um, since this is straight out of camera, you could still see where he had scratched um, in his skin because it's really dry here. So um, so that kind of stuff's on there. I might do some some smoothing and stuff of that information uh, later, if I, especially if I were going to publish this commercially. But um, so let's take another snapshot. And what we see here is the beginning when we started, and here's at the end. The difference is very, very subtle, but it's still realistic. It's what his eyes actually look like, and um, 
it helps that eyes pop just enough to uh, draw your eyes right to him without being uh, super crackly um, or that really weird um, aqua blue thing, that zombie eye look. So um, if you have any questions, I welcome you to ask them in comments, but this is uh, how I do it. This is how I make eyes pop. All right. Thanks so much for stopping by.